Our epic transcontinental road trip following the Lewis and Clark expedition is coming close to an end. We are less than 400 miles from the finish line. To think, we began by visiting Jefferson, both at DC and Monticello. Then Meriwether Lewis at Harper's Ferry. Pittsburgh, where he launched the kill boat. The Falls of the Ohio, where he met up with William Clark. St. Louis, where the expedition departed. Then Kansas City, up the Missouri, through Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Montana all the way to the headwaters, crossing the Rockies. And now, here we are, on the Snake River, less than 50 miles from the Columbia. Today we're going to explore the Columbia River Gorge with a side trip to Portland and Mount Hood. Then the season finale, in which we'll reach the end of the trail, literally. They even have a statue. So what are we waiting for? I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. This was just a quick overnight, last minute thing, just water and electric, but we only use the electric really. We're going to a full hookup site after this, so we'll be fine. All we really need is propane and off we go. This is the Joso High Bridge. At the time of its construction in 1912, it was the longest and highest railway bridge in the world. And now we're crossing the Snake River on the Lions Ferry Bridge. This is the confluence of the Palouse and Snake Rivers. And the Corps of Discovery would have arrived here on October 13th, 1805. This landscape doesn't even look real. Such a different part of the country. We're going to stop here at Lions Ferry State Park, just for a few minutes, to take in the views and read the interpretive sign. It is very nice, actually. For now, let's just park by the boat ramp and take a quick look around. Such a beautiful morning here in Washington and uh, this right here is Lyons Ferry State Park and there is supposed to be a Lewis and Clark marker somewhere around here so let's let's look that up. Let's go to the water real quick. I think this may be the historical marker. I have to be careful with that thing, I'm gonna get wet. So here we go, Lewis and Clark Trail. It's official. Such a beautiful park, such a beautiful area here. And I can only imagine, you know, Lewis and Clark, you know, after all the changes of scenery, you know, arriving here to this somewhat barren land, you know. I'm sure this was something they had never seen before. Anyway, we're gonna continue. There's a waterfall and then we're gonna kind of make our way uh, west towards uh, the Cascade uh, Mountains, actually. Hopefully the, the smoke will clear out enough that we can see Mount Hood. It would be a shame if we don't get to see Mount Hood. I just love the contrast of the colors in the barren land with the green vegetation. You know, it's about to hit me. We're going to continue on this road. There's supposed to be a waterfall, Palouse Falls. And according to the satellite images, there's supposed to be plenty of parking. This is it. Oh no, oh, well. I hate when this happens. Have I ever told you, when I grow up, I want a camper van, or a small class C rather. Mm, let's continue.
Our next point of interest is Sacajawea State Park, at the confluence of the Snake and Columbia Rivers. But first, and this was not part of the plan, there's a sign that says Charbonneau Park. Half a mile on the right, so why not? Charbonneau was, of course, Sacajawea's husband. This town, by the way, is called Ash Washington. There's a campground and a boat ramp. Now, here we have some Canadian geese, and it is a beautiful day. But otherwise, there's not a whole lot going on, so we're gonna continue downstream, in that general direction, towards Ice Harbor Dam. Next up, Sacajawea State Park. Let me get my bearings here real quick and uh, look at that, wildlife, oh, maybe not so wild. We're crossing the Snake River one last time as we approach the confluence with the Columbia. On October 16th, 1805, the expedition arrived here. Washington State Parks require something called a Discovery Pass, $10 per day or $30 per year, so yeah, I'm gonna have to get one of those. We are at the confluence of the Snake with the Columbia. Well, here we have a canoe, just like the ones uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition would have been, you know, sailing down the river on. Uh, I believe uh, they made him from uh, Ponderosa Pine. Uh, this one obviously broke here at the bow, so it's not river worthy, but um, yeah, here's the, the Snake River coming that way. And here's a bend of the Columbia, which goes that way, going west, all the way to the Pacific. And that's more or less the route we're following. Let's walk around. It's a beautiful park here, and I believe they do have a visitor's uh, center or interpretive center. So let's check it out. As I was filming, the ranger was quick to tell me that this may be the most likely appearance of Sacagawea, this picture of one of her descendants. He says that most depictions of her likeness out there are wrong. Look at the little prairie dog. We are told the whole story once again from the beginning. But of course, most visitors here haven't traveled 3,000 miles across the continent to get here as we have. I guess that would be Mount Hood. Huh? Uh, even though the kill boat never made it here, we do have a replica. There's the Snake River coming from the west, where the expedition came from. And now we're going to get our first glimpse of the Columbia River. The men were astonished at the number of salmon in the river. The water was so clear that no matter how deep the river, the bottom was plainly visible. This has changed a bit because of all the dams, and while the salmon still come, we don't get to see as many as when the river was flowing free. Look at that. Fly pelican. I know it's not. Yeah, it is a pelican. White pelican. We may not have as many salmon, but we do have geese. Lots of geese. down the Columbia. We're going to circle back and get on the south bank of the Columbia. There is at least one landmark we want to see. barely see the sign, but after that crease in the pavement, we are now in Oregon. Our next stop, we can barely see it in the distance. It is called Hat Rock. The expedition would have passed by here on October 19, 1805, 
and they saw this butte and named it Hat Rock, one of the few remaining landmarks from the time that remains above water. It almost looks like a mini devil's tower. Let's stop really quick and have a light lunch, more like breakfast really. What is our gourmet delicacy of the day? I got some uh, scrambled eggs with a uh, hot point uh, salsa, nachos and Swiss cheese. And as soon as the cheese melts, we're gonna eat. Bon appetit. By the way, pretty nice houses here by the Colombia. Not bad, not bad at all. Now we've got a little over two hours to Gorge Base Camp, which is where we're staying for the next three nights. We're going to cross over onto the Washington side and take State Route 14 West. Had we continued on the Oregon side, it would have been I-84, a couple of minutes faster, but we'll probably go that way tomorrow. And that's kind of the plan for tomorrow, by the way, we're going to use the campground as a base camp and then circle around this part of the Columbia River Gorge within an hour drive or so. That's a lot of wind power there on the Oregon side. Let's stop by the interpretive signs. Mount Jefferson. We can't see it today, but somewhere up there. We don't have waterfalls anymore, but in 1805, it was really sketchy. I don't know about Mount Jefferson, and I know it's still a little bit smoky, but could that possibly be? Could that be Mount Hood? And here we are, our home for the next three nights. Let me tell you about our sponsor for this episode, Surfshark VPN, and they've been a sponsor for a very long time. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and I cannot reiterate enough how important it is to be protected, especially when you're connecting to that potentially insecure Wi-Fi at a campground, hotel, a restaurant, coffee shop. Sometimes they don't even have passwords, and especially if you're going to access like your bank account, that's like a no-brainer, is it indispensable that you have a secure private connection between your devices and the internet and that's what a VPN provides, that's its main function. Now, it has other features and my favorite one is actually that you can access VPN servers all around the world and it, essentially you are teleported virtually to that location as far as the internet is concerned, so, so you can access 
content that may not be available at your physical location. And that's really, really convenient. Also, it has other features, extra features, like clean web that gets rid of unwanted ads or spyware, a true incognito search for your eyes only, and, and, and so much more. Check them out. Go to surfshark.deals slash myrv. And if you enter promo code myrv at checkout, you get 85% off and three months for free. Who's hungry? The last time I was here, I came to this brewery in White Salmon and I thought it was great. You get to see great views of Mount Hood from the town, so that's a plus. Here we go, public parking on the right. Well, there it is. Our prominent mountain. It is called Everybody's Brewing. We got the mushroom soup. Mm. Chicken burrito. And when we walk outside, there it is again. The first time you see it, it's like it isn't really there. Well, that was good. And with that view of Mount Hood, I think we're gonna call it a night. And uh, tomorrow we'll begin exploring the area. <laughs> Let's fill up here on the Washington side because in Oregon you must get someone to pump your gas. We're crossing from White Salmon, Washington to Hood River, Oregon. And check out that view of Mount Hood and the Columbia River Gorge. It is just gorgeous out here. It is a very narrow bridge, originally built in 1924, with the lift span built in 1938, after Bonneville Dam caused the water level to rise. There's a $2 cash toll on the Oregon side. And now we're going back east on I-84. The campground is located at the very spot where the scenery starts to change. To the east, we have that barren landscape where we came from. To the west, lush, evergreen vegetation. Here we're going to take US 30, the historic Columbia River Highway, so we can see the gorge from a higher perspective. This is called Rowena Crest. We are kind of halfway between Hood River and the Dalles, which happens to be where we're going next. And from here you get commanding views of the gorge. Well, here we are. This is called Rowena Crest. And uh, it, this, it does afford commanding views of the Columbia River here, looking to the east. And you can almost imagine Lewis and Clark coming down the river with uh, their men and Sacagawea. Here they call her Sacagawea. When we were in South, in North Dakota, it's Sacagawea or even Sacagawea. So I don't think there's a consensus of how to pronounce her name or even how she looked like. Because as you saw yesterday, the gentleman at the, at the Sacagawea or Sacagawea Visitor Center in Lewiston, it wasn't in Lewiston, it was at the confluence of the, of the Snake and the, and the Columbia. You know, he showed us what is probably the, the, the most accurate picture of how she would look like, but nobody really knows. Anyways, um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful all around. And now we're gonna continue going back east. And uh, and then eventually we're gonna, you know, we're doing like a circle with, without the trailer in tow, which is uh, the idea. We continue. Before we continue, let's admire this beautiful view of the Columbia River Gorge. From the first time I saw it back in 2019, I really fell in love with this area. In my mind, this looks more like a painting, not real life. Look at 
that possibly be Mount Adams? I think so. We are approaching a town called The Dalles. The Lewis and Clark expedition arrived here on October 22, 1805, and before all the dams, this was the site of very dangerous waterfalls and rapids. Lewis and Clark hired several Native Americans with horses to help with the dangerous task of crossing the waterfalls and the rapids. But right now our task is to find a place to eat because we're starving. After a little bit of research, the Baldwin Saloon here seems to be good, not to mention historic. We are surrounded by all these tasteful nudes and Yosemite. Cheers. We've got stuffed mushrooms and clam chowder. The clam chowder is actually really good. And the salmon, which is amazing. The restaurant is located in a historic building dating back to 1876. Well, pleasantly surprised. That was actually better than expected. Uh, they seem to be understaffed like everywhere else. I mean, there was one person taking care of the whole place. But now we're going to go see if we can go to the, where Lewis and Clark camped right here on the, on the bank of the, of the Columbia River. It might be cool to, one of these days, go on a river cruise, don't you think? And at first sight, I thought the ship was called the American Express. There is so much train traffic. You know, before I started traveling, I had no idea. You can tell, at some point, there was access to vehicular traffic, but not anymore. It is a short walk from downtown. Well, this is uh, no overnight camping. This is Rock Fort campsite. And here we have the requisite Lewis and Clark expedition map. So, this is as close as we would have been to the actual camp. Somewhere down here. Yeah, the river did not look like this in 1805. This has been dammed and all that. This used to be that, that part where they went through some rapids and some cascades and small waterfalls. So the actual uh, campsite, it's probably somewhere underwater at this point. There's that cruise ship. It's the American Empress. One of these days, we'll do a series aboard one of those. And from here, it's always lurking somewhere over the horizon. That will be Mount Hood. We've got such strong winds from the west that it almost looks like the river is flowing upstream. And we've got a dead fish. That's unfortunate. Check it out, we've got a train coming, a massive one. Don't you love trains? And it's gone. And that's all we're gonna do here in the Dalles today, but let me tell you, there seems to be a lot to do in this town. There's even a good winery inside the historic Sunshine Mill. And you know, Oregon wines are really good. There, that's the famous winery in the historic mill.
Next up, Celilo Park. Apparently, before the dam was built, uh, there used to be a waterfall right here. A great spot for fishing and uh, I'm sure that's one of the places where Lewis and Clark had to do one of those portages where they carried the canoes on land. It's very windy today. Let's, let's go down to the river. Beautiful, beautiful day. It is so windy that it almost looks like the river is flowing in the wrong direction. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe the Pacific is that way and all the waves are coming this way. Once again, crossing back to the Washington side. Today we can see Mount Hood much better. It is clearly uh -huh, a much clearer day today. This is Wishram, Washington. When I was here in 2019, I went down to see a historic locomotive. What I didn't realize at the time was that there is a Lewis and Clark reference down here as well. It is the Explorer's Monument. It was kind of hard to find, but here we are. The first two names, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. And there's that historic locomotive I was talking about. We stopped by the campground for a couple of hours to take a break and now we're going to explore the western part of the gorge a little bit. It is such a beautiful day. We should take advantage of it. Tomorrow it might be cloudier. Have you noticed the changing vegetation as we're crossing to the west of the Cascades? And this is where we're gonna turn around, but we'll do so on the Oregon side. This is the Bridge of the Gods, part of the Pacific Crest Trail, and it was prominently featured at the end of the 2014 movie Wild with Reese Witherspoon. It is a tall bridge, by the way, $3 per car. Thunder Island Brewing Company, Ale House coming up here on the right, Cascade Locks here seems to be a pretty fun town.
That's it for today. We're going to Portland, but first we're going to see a couple of things along the way. We're cruising along White Salmon, but what I really want to do is get a good shot of Mount Hood. I know, I'm obsessed. And we might be going there later today. Columbia River Gorge is just so gorgeous, isn't it? I can't get tired of it. And today was supposed to be rainy and cloudy, but so far we're enjoying good weather. Let's hope it stays that way. Once again, crossing the Bridge of the Gods. Let me tell you, this back and forth on these tall bridges, it's getting expensive. That would be Bonneville Dam, right there on the right. And someone recommended we visit Bonneville Fish Hatchery here, so that's what we're gonna do. There's the gift shop, and they have a sculpture and a fountain depicting some sturgeon jumping. I've never really gotten the appeal of visiting a hatchery, but this one seems special. Here's the visitor center. Let's check out the salmon. Wow, check it out. There's so many of them. I guess they are following their natural instinct to swim upstream. Here's the big tank from a higher perspective. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy this as much as I have. And we still haven't seen the best part, which I believe is the sturgeons. Here we have another tank. I believe with trout in it. Now for the pièce de résistance, the sturgeon. Here we go. I don't think I had ever seen a sturgeon before, at least not in real life. It looks kind of like a cartoon character to me. That large one in the back, I think that might be Herman the Sturgeon. He's 80 years old and weighs 500 pounds. White sturgeon, by the way, is a prehistoric fish. According to what I read, they evolved over 200 million years ago. Their mouth built like a vacuum tube, so they can eat food off the bottom of the pond. At first glance, from afar, they almost look like manatees. And I know, manatee is not a fish. And there is old Herman, chilling back there, not wanting to be bothered. And there it is, from above. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Herman. Well, that was really cool to see, especially the, the giant, the giant uh, sturgeon. Now, when I eat a sturgeon, I, I know what they look like. Um, I'm gonna stop at the gift shop and we continue. This rest area here is one of the places from where you can see Multnomah Falls. Parking might be a challenge on a Saturday at this time of the day, but we'll try. 
There it is, the tallest waterfall in the state of Oregon. And this is the most visited natural recreation site in the Pacific Northwest. And you can tell. There's no parking, so we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, are you staying or leaving? I guess you're staying. Actually, the oversized vehicle area is completely empty, so we'll be back tomorrow with trailer in tow. There's a viewpoint coming up, so let's stop. On October of 1792, the HMS Chatham, which was part of the Vancouver expedition, entered the Columbia River and navigated up to this point. I think I found my boat. Back at the gates of the mountains, we saw what could be described as a camper on top of a pontoon. And here's another one. This one seems to be in better shape. It is called a sun tracker. More research shall go into this. And off to Portland we go. Always a little unnerving driving into a big city, especially one you've never visited before. And Portland doesn't really have the best reputation as of late, so we don't really know what to expect. Traffic jam, well, that was expected, even on a weekend. Today, we're not going to do an in-depth exploration of Portland. That would be the subject for a different trip. I just want to see what it is like, and we have to pick up a package, and since we're here, and there are like 70 breweries in town, I say, yeah, sure, why not? We're going to have lunch at one of them. There's a little bit of urban blight here and there. So far, Portland doesn't look half bad. There's a lot of construction going on as of September 2022, but otherwise the city center here seems very vibrant. There, on that corner, that's the brewery we want to go to. Now the challenge might be finding parking. You know, Starship is a great truck, but I wouldn't call it small, so it is not a great city vehicle. That other corner is Whole Foods, where we're picking up our package. Here we go, we're gonna park right here. Clearance 610, Starship is 67, so no problem with height, but this place is tight. We don't have the best turning radius, and to be honest, I'm still getting used to the size of this truck. I haven't done much city driving in it yet. Here we go, the Schutz Brewery and Public House, which is originally from Bend, Oregon, another beer town. We're having our customary IPA. Want to melt? <laughs> Pork and grits. They had a reduced menu, but what they had was good. My backwoods here was also highly recommended, but we decided to, to go to the shoots, which is like the one that I knew about. But next time, we're coming to this one. Well, so far, Portland is not living up to its negative reputation. At least this area. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I would love to spend more time here. Now, getting out of this parking garage, that's gonna be the real odyssey.
We made it without a scratch. Here in this area, sadly, we do see some people camping on the sidewalk, but I don't really know how widespread the situation is. Here's Waterfront Park, and as I mentioned, it seems to be a very lively city. We'll return, one of these days. But now we have one more destination in mind, and that would be Mount Hood. Gordon, who is a Patreon, well, he contacted me to offer us a tour of the Timberline Lodge, which is famous and historic on its own right, and its exterior was also featured in the 1980 film The Shining. There it is, such a majestic mountain. A little cloudy up there, but maybe it will clear up, eh? fingers crossed. At government camp, we meet up with Gordon, and yes, he's driving a vintage 1952 Willis, because that's how he rolls. How cool is that? This is the place. Well, here we are at the Timberline Lodge with Gordon. And Hello. Little, are you going to give us a quick tour here? I'll give you a tour and yeah. kind of explain a few things and yeah. some history. Yeah, you've been working here for how many years? I've been here for 12 right now. 12? I've been 42 overall. Let's step into the hotel. But first, let's look back at the view of the Cascade Mountains. Kind of wishing for a clearer day, but... It is what it is. Here at the entrance level, the big fireplace that extends to the upper floor. And of course, Gordon is a virtual encyclopedia when it comes to the history of the hotel, and he knows every nook and cranny, full of anecdotes. And here we have, for example, the first snowboard, called Snurfer, invented in 1965. Here we have a room decorated as it would have been at the time the hotel originally opened. The hotel was built using many recycled materials. For example, this post was originally a telephone pole. This one too. And the crowns are all carved, uh, depicting different animals. What a view from the Roosevelt Terrace. Here we have more wood carvings, and apparently it has become increasingly difficult, actually impossible, to find replacement shingles for the roof these days. And that's the window. If you remember in the movie, in the scene where the kid comes out of the window and the snow is coming up all the way to the window, well, that was the window. Here's once again the multi-level fireplace. Timberline Martini, anyone? There's a trail that goes up the mountain, but we're going to do something so much better. Just wait. Maybe someday we'll stay at the Great Timberline Lodge, 
which is, by the way, adorned by many original works of art. That's a very heavy iron gate, all made by hand. Now we are at the top floor. The multi-level lobby has such great ambience and more works of art. Of course, there's a bar, and if we didn't have other plans, we would definitely stop for an adult beverage, but as I said, perhaps someday we'll spend a couple of nights here at the Great Timberline Lodge. Now we're about to board a vintage military vehicle here. This is awesome. <laughs> Everybody has to live. Ah! Oh, now we're talking. Yeah, we've gone the wrong way and the wrong way. That trail, by the way, the Pacific Crest. You can walk all the way from Mexico to Canada on it. Sudden, the mountain has cleared up as if welcoming us. And this is as high as we can go, by car anyway. And there is Mount Hood. Some of that snow never melts. Well, take a look at this view. It's amazing. And then there's the other view, looking at Mount Hood. Well, which has undressed from its cloudy cover just to greet us up here. And um, what can I say? I want to thank uh, Gordon for for this exclusive ride. By the way, this is this is a private road for, used for maintenance and special events. So do not attempt this at home. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. And. Uh, and we're rotating style. We're rotating this vintage. I'm, I'm gonna ask Gordon a little more about this uh, Jeep here. In a few, but like some timbers and plenty of them. So it was quite a ride. Silcox Hut here is part of the hotel, and today there's a private event going on. So I'll be brief and discreet. Well, that feels good. Gordon brought his good camera, so he was able to snap some great shots. Now, we must go back down. We're taking a different route on the way down. Here's another great vantage point. I bet you on a clear day you can see for miles. Mount Jefferson should be visible in the distance.
Here we are about to cross the Pacific Crest Trail. One of these days, one of these days, we might do a section of it. Now we're going to follow Gordon to Mount Hood Brewing Company for a much anticipated IPA. We're taking a different route too. The old, much narrower service road that goes through the actual ski runs. We are. Thank you, Gordon, for everything, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Is that Mount Adams I see? Well, tomorrow will be another day. Moving day. Well, good morning, and yes, the cockpit camera is back. I still need to adjust it a little bit, but uh, this is what happened. Uh, the suction cup stopped working, so I had to buy a new one. <laughs> and by the way, all this stuff that I use uh, to, to film in the car, everything is available in the video description. I'm sure most of you know that already, but uh, just thought I'd you know, say it. And um, anyway, we are going to Astoria. First, we have to make a Walmart run, and then this is pretty much the end of the Lewis and Clark journey, whatever we're going to do today and tomorrow, so enjoy the ride. Yes, today we're saying goodbye to the Columbia River Gorge. And at some point, we'll see the Pacific Ocean. And just like William Clark wrote on November 7th, 1805, we might yell at the top of our lungs, Ocean in view! Oh, the joy! But more about that on the next and final episode of the Lewis and Clark series. Since I'm publishing this on December 18th, I want to take this opportunity to wish you happy holidays, a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you happen to celebrate this season, I wish you good health and happiness. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my